Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Jen Hill, and I'm with the Huron Valley Chamber of Commerce, and we are um, here with Lisa Schiller for our seminar series. She's from Legal Shield and ID Shield, and she's going to talk to us about um, opportunities um, that that she has with her business and why um, businesses should maybe consider this. Um, and take it away, Lisa. Awesome. Oh. Wait, tell them about, wait, tell them about the basket. I will, I will tell them. First of all, thank you so much, Jen. It's an honor to be on today. And just to share some things that, you know, we if, if any of you watched my little video that I did <laughs> tape downtown Milford, despite all the trucks going by and the garbage dumpsters behind me, but we went ahead and, and taped that. And um, really just to share with you some of the things, I think some of the challenges we're all facing as small business owners, as well as how important it is to support our small business community and then to just make sure you know that there are some resources there for you, and then maybe we can get together and, and discuss it further, but really a high level overview of what we're going to talk about today. And then I've got this great prize packet today. I'm actually going to show it at the end, so you got to stick with me, um, but it's um, really to support our local community and to show our appreciation. We've got some great goodies that I've put in there from um, Legal Shield that you'll love. And um, also, of course, supporting um, the Clothing Cove and Bakers of Milford. So we can all use something to wear and go out to eat now that we can actually go out to eat. So pretty exciting thing. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, so you can uh, follow along here. And can everyone see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Let me try this again. Now, can you see yeah. it? Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. All right, perfect. Let me go ahead and put this into presentation mode. Uh, so, yeah, you just perfect. pretend that I look like that all the time. Okay, anyways, <laughs> here I am. My Our business entity of Sh is Schiller & Associates, and we're brokers that we, we offer identity theft solutions, small business solutions um, for individuals, for families, for business owners, which is what we're gonna be focusing on today. And then a variety of other things, whether you're a, a, a gun owner and you you need you know a policy for that, or whether you are you know an employer and you have employees and you'd like to protect and empower your employees. So there's a variety of things we have, but today we're really gonna focus on the small business arena, but I'm here in the local community, have been for decades and uh, love my chamber and my fellow co-business owners. So we wanna stick together and see what we can do to make it better for everyone. Um, one thing that we understand, and look at this picture. I, when I first looked at it, I'm like, wait, where is that taken? But this is actually done from our, our corporate um, uh, in Oklahoma somewhere, but this really just represents kind of like Main Street, Main Street USA. And really 2020, I don't have to tell you this, um, it was a tough year for everybody in a variety of reasons, but Bottom line is small businesses have had to do things like, you know, increase technology and ex expand onto, you know, online marketing, develop that uh, a bigger online presence, uh, creating new strategies, some even, even opening a new product or service. Uh, bottom line, you need partners. We all need a shield. We all need partners and, and legal shield can really be both. Um, our small business community, our community at large is only as successful as our small businesses are. That is plain and simple. I don't know if you've seen the labor uh, statistics that shows that literally 97% of all business in America is under 100 employees, 97%. So that's what's run in America. You know, look at look at uh, you know our downtowns, and that's what that's what's keeping America going. So it's important for all of us. So I did ask you if you watch my quick video, I did ask you to bring a question. If you want to pop it in the in the chat feature, you can. Maybe Jen, you can keep an eye on that for me. Um, sure. What is what is keeping you up at night? So when you're thinking about your business, now I don't mean you know that <laughs> our kids and spouses. I mean what's literally keeping us up business wise, whether you own a business, you're an independent contractor, you're, you know, you're a part of a business, part of a management team. What are the things that you're just, um, that keep you up at night? What are you thinking about? What is that? And, and we'll talk about those. If anybody pops any in there, we can, Jen, you can interrupt me, but I'm going to share some of the things that we have found just in the past year. People are just wriggling over the new laws. And by the way, we all know that these laws that are affecting us because of the pandemic, they're changing daily. 
So it's really hard to keep on track of what this is. You know, grants, are we eligible? Are we 1099ing people? Are we W2ing? All of these things from people that are working remotely brings in a plethora of issues and different challenges and policies and laws that we have to stay on top of as small as a small business community. You know, maybe you're thinking about updating your employee handbook. We need to include these plans that we've got dealing with a pandemic in these documents. Maybe you don't have one at all. You know, we think about these types of things that we, we know we need to have in place, but maybe we don't. Contracts, rents, leases, equipment, files, claim, insurance. I mean, the list goes on and on. If you're not familiar with Legal Shield, just real quickly, we've been in business since 1972. So we're brick and mortar solid, have been, we work with over 140,000 businesses. We have a dedicated firm that we use in every state. So there's no stressing, no guessing. We always know where we're going. And none of our services negate a relationship you might have with a counselor. If you have an attorney, clearly if you're in business, you've used attorneys, but our goal is to get us to use, find out why we're not using those services and what we can do to complement those services. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in detail. So Lisa, we, yes, oh, we just lost sound. But now... Did you get it back? Okay. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Jen, I think I lost you because you're frozen. Okay. Mona, you can hear me. Dawn, Shannon, Rich. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep going, Jen. I can't, I can't hear you, but they can hear me. So maybe there's a little connection there. But um, we have hired a, um, a firm called a Decision Analyst. So it's, a, it's an outside an analytical company that did the needs of small businesses. And literally 60% of small business owners said they've experienced legal issues, of course. Um, they've hired, some many didn't even hire an attorney because of the cost associated. Those that did spent on an average of $7,600. And that's not small business friendly. When you think about why don't we use the legal system? Well, it's complicated, it's costly. We have a lack of understanding. Um, how many times have you Googled an answer? Now, for those of you that own a business, um, is your HR person, your office manager, your assistant, your partner, your shop supervisor, your medical practice manager, they're Googling answers for the business. We shouldn't be relying on Google, but we don't, typically don't reach out to our attorneys enough simply because of the cost associated with it. So before the 2020 hit, these are some of the, the actually the top 10 reasons where people were using an attorney. Very typical, most of us face most of these, whether it's debt collection, needing a contract or document reviewed, you've got a dispute with a supplier or a vendor, independent contractor, course license, liability issues, human resources, a big chunk out of that. Employees are our greatest asset and um, you know, lots of challenges related there. And then also we're all concerned about taxes and concerned about lawsuits. But let's take a look at what happened in um, 20 uh, after the pandemic hit. Look at these top 10 issues now. So we've got, now we have, you know, uh, <laughs> commonly questions as far as landlord tenant issues. Now we've got, you know, people that aren't paying their bills, but you can't evict anyone because of, of the laws that have gone into place. Travel issues where people aren't getting, either can't get somewhere or they're not getting their money back. Financial concerns. Do you have a shelter in place? Do you have a plan in place for your business to deal with, you know, remote um, remote um, workers? And then also we, we all know, and unfortunately it's tragic truth about the increase of domestic violence and things like that and mental issues and how do we deal that? And then on top of everything else, we've got scammers out there, just like we do when we have... Um, you know, a natural disaster, for example, anytime there's a, a hurricane, a fire, we have unfortunately unscrupulous people that will prey on the consumer. You know, somebody give me $500 for a roof and then they never show up again. Same thing's happening with COVID scams. Of course, we've got something for you. We're going to fix it, yada, yada, yada. And then money that's going to the wrong person. Uh, the amount of money that's gone to deceased people or wrong people is staggering because of identity theft. So we're dealing with a lot of issues there that we weren't dealing with prior to the pandemic. We have a great resource here. Again, any of these resources I can make available to you, 101 reasons for, for businesses to really reach out and use an attorney. And again, these are things that we're all facing, but we're either winging it, doing it on our own, Googling it, or only using an attorney attorney when it's absolutely critical instead of being proactive. Because really, when you think about the choice that we're faced with, 
dealing with the environment that we're in. Now we're either going to pay to be proactive or we're going to be forced to pay to be reactive. And we don't want to be forced to pay to be reactive. We want to be able to use services that will allow us to be proactive to protect and grow our business. So with Legal Shield, you'll see the, the legal app there. We make the access easier and of course affordable. So when you think about your phone app, you're never further away from your law firm than you are your phone. So as long as you have access to your phone, you've got access to your firm. And there's a variety of services in there. It's a one tap access, regardless of where you are in the country, services that protect our family. And then again, today we're focusing on, on the business community as well. Um, so in a high level, just a kind of a quick overview about the portfolio of services that we have for small businesses. Small businesses have big, biggest, big business problems. We have the same issues. We just don't have the same resources. So this is something to put into our hands that allows us to navigate through some of those complexities and those um, challenges that we have without worrying about the cost, okay? Um, so in here, for example, let's start with our small business plan. And again, these have now, we changed these all in tw for 2021. So they're totally, let's pick what's right for me type of a service instead of a, it's not a one size fits all. It's not a based on the size of your business. It's based on what you want to do to your, with your business. For example, do you have two people in your business that make decisions on behalf of the company? If you're in human resources, you're making them all the time. You know, what do I do? In this scenario, wouldn't it be nice to be able to pick up the phone and run it by an attorney to find out if we're compliant, if we're doing the right thing? And to be able to open that up, maybe you need two people to make this that are making decisions on behalf of the company or three or five. So you can see that the programs are uh, priced accordingly from 49 to 99 and 169, depending on your budget and what your needs are. Again, the consultations are always unlimited. They'll write letters and phone calls on behalf of, of the business entity. In, instead of hiring an attorney at, a, at an hourly rate, when you think about the average cost being about $350 an hour, this is like having an intercom system in your office where up to five people can use it for about a dollar a day. So I mean, about a, about a dollar an hour when you think about hiring the cost of an attorney. So whether you need 10 letters or whether you need 40 letters, that's your decision. Designated consultations, those are for more complex items like a trademark, international law, things like that, copyrights. Document reviews. How many times do you sign documents and have never had it reviewed by an attorney, even though we know it's been written by an attorney, right? So we want to make sure we're taking advantage of that. Again, it's, it's priced. Uh, where instead of affording 15 minutes of a conversation with an attorney, you have them literally for the entire month for that same fraction of a cost. So collection letters, now this varies by business, but there's a lot of businesses out there that cannot get money to come back. What do we resort to? Where typically we will use a third party collection agency who may not be successful in getting those funds returned. And if they are sharing up to 40% of it with that agency. What if, a law, what if the law firm can write a collection letter for you? Number one, people are responsive from when it comes from an attorney. Number two, all those funds stay with your business. So again, how many of those do you need? Five, 10, 15. Trademark and copyright is also included. Handbook, if you haven't had an employee handbook and you've paid someone to write it for you, you know that these can be upwards of $2,500 to have them um, done correctly. So again, depending on your needs, would you want a discount or do you get a flat rate? Custom contract drafting is another one where we need specially written contracts. And of course, things that we're always dealing with, always concerned about, and that's gonna involve IRS auditing. Anything outside of any realm that's mentioned in these plans is still offered at a discounted rate. So out, anything that might be outside of that, there are. And we have supplemental um, coverage as well if you're, concerned about being sued. For example, we have a trial defense supplement. And then we also have supplements that deal with business consulting. So you're sending it over to a consultant that's going to help you with whether it's HR issues or accounting questions or internet or technology or whatever it might be. They're doing all the research for you, coming back and giving you an answer. So you, you and your employees aren't spending time on those types of things. So let's take a look at the business supplement. Now, this is huge for people that are working from home. Maybe you're an independent contractor or you're a small business owner and the only employees you have are family members. This is a great supplement. You can get the family plan to cover your family. And those are things like your wills, your traffic tickets, your document reviews for your family. And then for $12.95 a month, you can add onto it a home-based supplement. 
that's going to allow you to use the attorney for your business. Let's say you have a house up north and you're renting it out on Airbnb. What kinds of complications can come from just something that simple? Isn't it great to know that we can reach out to a law firm and not worry about the cost to find out what we can do or have a letter written, uh, document reviews, collection letters, even interstate services. So you've got a business based here in Michigan, but you do business outside the state. Most of us do now with e-commerce do business out of state. I do a lot of business out of state. So I have questions about interstate law. Um, I, can, I can use that. So just to let you know that we have those things. Now the family plan, I think is it's the core of, of what we do. And just so you know, we do have discounted rates on these family plans through the chamber. And I'll show you that at the end. But if you're looking at that tap from an app, calling directly into the law firm, tell them a little bit about what your need is. And then within four business hours, an attorney calls you back. So that number one is huge because we can pool our resources and that allows us to attract some of the top rated attorneys in the country and also allows us as Legal Shield to make sure we're honoring our service agreements because we have them directly with these law firms. We collectively are, are, are their largest client. So no matter where we go in the state or what area of law we need, we know that we can have access to that. So some of the things that are common with the family laws, again, pick up the phone and talk to them about whatever it is you might need. Something came in the mail, you don't understand that something happened at school, uh, the neighbor's dog is barking. I mean, it really doesn't matter what you call them for, you can get that consultation, it's unlimited. So document reviews, I'm a big advocate of this simply because I've signed a contract without reviewing it, dealing with my mortgage years ago, and it came back to a $6,000 deficit for us because we didn't have it reviewed by an attorney. So we're big advocates on con even con even standard contracts like a car lease or car purchase. We saved a lot of money uh, for people just understanding what's in their, in their contracts. Um, traffic tickets, now I'm not ad advocating that we all break the law, but if you're like me, you've had tickets and you know what happens to insurance rates here in Michigan, especially if you have teenage drivers, you have kids in college, out of state, oh, it's so important. And just with a click of a button, we can take a picture of that citation. I got one in Texas last year. So took a picture of the citation. It went to my law firm here in Michigan. They reached out to some an attorney in Texas who can go to court on my behalf. I don't have to be there and I have zero points. So still driving good in the Schiller household. Things like your wills, medical directives, powers of attorney. We all need them. They're included in the plan. So a lot of a variety of things in the family plan there, even non-contested you know, divorces and adoptions and name changes and things like that. So a 24 seven emergency access, I cannot stress how important that is because of identity theft now in the marketplace. You might be stopped for that traffic ticket when the officer runs your record, if there's a bench warrant out for your arrest for not showing up in traffic court, that's a problem, right? And it's happened to three people that I know. So we wanna make sure that we understand we have this access. I'm not gonna go really into identity theft. I'd love to do a workshop exclusively on that maybe later in the year, um, but just know that identity theft isn't about who's in our wallet and it's not about our credit score. It's about an employment fraud. It's about someone starting a business in your name. It's about someone using your medical benefits and now whatever they had done is part of your medical file. That's a bad day in the emergency room. It's not good for businesses who are trying to keep medical costs down. It's just a variety of things. And then of course, due to the pandemic, there's so much more streaming now. So our smart TVs are watching us. Our Alexas and Google assistants are recording us. We all know that when we tap onto a website, the tracking method is there, um, which is why when you talk about something, I talked about a new puppy last year, and the next thing I know, everything in my social media feed was about puppies. That's not coincidental, right? So how do we get a handle of that? Just know that our Shield product was just rated number one by Forbes, and it really it has all the components you would expect as far as uh, different points, 34 points for privacy and security monitoring, but we also have reputation management, which allows you to have a score and it goes backwards in our social media and anything that looks questionable, it comes back to us and says, hey, do you really want to post this? Makes a lot of difference when people are looking for jobs out there now, right? So just to know that we have a consultation here to be able to reach out and address these matters, but then also most importantly, on top of the alerts or the credit scores, is we have private licensed investigators that actually do the restoration, regardless of the type of identity theft that it is. So just know as a consumer, the difference between credit fraud and true identity theft. Business plan supplements, again, I talked a little bit about this, about having a consultant behind you on top of the legal side of it, 
that deals with a variety of issues where we're not taking time and effort, which means money out of our business to research things that are important to us. And then um, these are some prices, which I'm happy to say that some of these are, are um, much higher because we have a great negotiated rate with the chamber. So that's wonderful. But just know that, again, the small business plan, depending on what's friendly for your budget, these are month to month services family and business supplement, the business plus, which is the consulting side, trial defense, we can add that on if we're concerned about being sued. We also have, of course, services that deal with um, gun owners and with our CDL drivers. So just a, a things to address specific types of businesses that are there as well. So you look at the legal shield and ID shield for the family. Think about this, $54.90 a month which is nothing when you think about what we're paying for all types of other services. But with a chamber, it's 3390. So that's huge, 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 huge. And of course, a lot of my business deals with employee benefits. So we can roll our services out voluntary, employee paid or employer paid or co-fringed um, to not only help keep employees' minds and bodies on the job, but to help the employer as well and the employees and their families. And then with member perks, I just want to tell you, everyone who has either one of our services, we have 400 companies in here with thousands of offers, everything from your local pennies and coals to food and dining and travel entertainment, but also electronics. And I just bought pet insurance through here. Nationwide pet insurance, I uh, saved $300 for our new puppy, new puppy on wellness care. So please check that. I know some of you have this service. Make sure you're going on and checking that before you're buying things in, in, as well. And then here, again, the special pricing for the chamber. Here's the website. If you haven't looked at it, please jot this down. Legalshield.com slash, well, that's actually incorrect. I just caught my own error. I apologize. It's legalshield.com slash info. That's I-N-F-O slash Huron Valley. So legalshield.com slash info, I-N-F-O, slash Huron Valley. And it'll give you really just the, the listing of all the things I've just covered, which are quite a few things, but so you know that they're there. And then um, honestly, want to thank you for joining us. I have some free COVID resources. Just reach out to me. We want to make sure we're shielding our businesses and protecting and helping our businesses grow. Now, Jen, I'm going to enlist your help. Are you still there with us? I, I am. Can you you are. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so before we do that, um, is there, a, why don't we do some questions? Don't you think we should sure. do a little question? Yes. Are, did you see anything come up in the Yeah. Show? So okay. um, some of these were more business oriented. So, I mean, more, uh, a little bit more broader. So how to raise funds to continue your projects is, is what Pam um, has asked. Um, and maybe oh. we can all discuss that. Talking about raising funds for a project that you're working on for your um, nonprofit or for your... Pam, can you... Yeah, let, yeah, let me clarify that. Um, yes, raising funds for many of our projects have been put on hold because fundraising is difficult and online fundraising um, seems very difficult for small nonprofits. My, our own little local Optimist Club has been burned to the tune of about $1,500 over the last two years, a PayPal payment that gets disputed and you, you dispute it for months and months and months and now your time frame's up and it's just gone. A certificate that's promised to be mailed. You auction it off, it never gets mailed. Um, right. And, and those are those are some serious challenges that all businesses face. Um, as far as where we tie in with that, our business plans are for profit or for for profit business. We may not be in profit, but they're for for profit business. So I unfortunately, know. the legal side doesn't help the, the nonprofits. However, you know, when you think about, you know, maybe some of us can chime in with some of the successes, I know that all the nonprofits are having the same type of an issue as far as fundraising goes. It's the environment that we're in. People are frightened and the more negative news we get out there, the more frightened people get and they're pulling back on their funds. And um, there are a lot of scams out there. Definitely, no doubt about it. Now, if a scam affects you personally, again, those are things you want to reach out to your, your attorney on. And if it affects your for-profit business, for but for our nonprofits, who's got some suggestions um, maybe that you've seen success in your in your nonprofit or a nonprofit that you work with. Um, I know. Pam, 
Um, we're in the same boat uh, because we lost Milford Memories. And if you um, understand how much we lost, it's, it's significant. Um, a couple of things. You have to look at, at fundraising in a different way. Um, you also have to understand that people are still willing to give money. We've done very well with our, um, we actually ask for donations, um, but we, we market it as, you have to market them, not as a donation, but as an opportunity for um, um, getting their name out there, aligning their name with you. So it's not just a donation, it's more of a business opportunity. And if you switch it like that, you might be successful. The other thing is, is you have to ask. And you have to say, and I can't hear you, Pam. Okay, are you there? I got a call that looked like there was a, an example of a scam, a call that looked like it was a, my vaccine appointment. Oh, okay. So oh. What, what, I, what I was saying is, you, you just have to be more diligent about uh, making sure you ask, making sure you let people understand the state of your um, yeah, uh, exactly. of your organization, making sure that your people that have, have um, donated to you in the past understand where you are and your need right now. Now, you may not get all of those donors back, but I bet you money, you will get them back. The other thing is looking at raising money in a different way meaning offering sponsorship opportunities or marketing opportunities so that it, it's not just a donation, that they get something back for their dollars. Um, I know that's, I, I know that that's not really the way your um, organization is. is set up, but you can think outside the box and I bet you can come up with something. Yeah, sometime I would like to talk to you about that because I would like to talk to the chamber members about ways to use their nonprofit volunteer organizations to promote their business. They have projects they want to do. They don't want to spend money on their employees going out into the community and doing them. And there are volunteers in the community that could fill that gap for them. But yeah, I think that, yeah, I, I think that's a great point, Pam. I, it's another one of those things we talked about in the very beginning where there's resources available to us. We may not be tapping into it. I do agree with Jen that there are still people willing to, to give. And we do have to position that in a different way where, um, you know, if we can, we can set something up that will help someone in their business, for example, if you're going to, you know, be soliciting funds from a business entity and, and how is that going to reach uh, the people that they're desiring to reach and how are we going to do that? So we can get more creative and do that. But I think obviously with the end customer in mind saying, you know, what we can do together to promote your business to make a bottom line difference for you. Um, and then also, I know last year at the end of the year, there were, I was amazed at the people that were just looking for, were looking for tax write-offs. Yeah. So there's still that as well. So we can position it that way, but those are great questions. And you definitely want to use, you know, have access. You want to use an attorney to find out what laws affect the nonprofits. What what are you doing? Have you applied for everything that might apply to you? You know, I know example for the church that I go to in Highland, amazingly enough, as much as, you know, we were closed for a while there and then we did live stream, we've been open for a while, but our givings and offerings maintained and we were still able to, because of detailed reporting, we were able to show that we were able to get the funding instead of having to do the loan payback, we were able to get that and to qualify for that. So those are all great news stories amidst the gloom and doom out there. So I'm sure there's something we can collectively come together to make that better for the Optimist Club. Oh, thank well. you, Lisa. I just about can tell you what church you go to because I've done so much research on this. Uh, but I will tell you just briefly, what prompted my question is a major cruise company that ag agreed to provide us with a service and agreed that it was in the mail and agreed that everything was good to go and never followed through mm. and we were burned. Yeah, for sure. Yep, that's when unfortunately legal action is the only way you can take. And, and a lot of times that's more cost prohibitive. That legal shield can't change the legal system. We just give everyday people access to it. Unfortunately, we don't have it for nonprofits now, but boy, that would be that would be one because I see it on the other side where that happens and they're able to get, you know, recourse for that. So, but you can reach out. I mean, we have some great attorneys locally in the community that might be able to help you with that. Okay. Um, any other questions, Jen? 
Yes, there was. Um, Shannon, um, she asked, I'm a social media and marketing manager for several small businesses right now. The difficulty is bringing in new customers where foot traffic used to do that. We're relying on online platforms. This helps tremendously, but I wonder if there are programs in our state we can tap into. Mona, maybe you can answer that. Oh, I know there's a lot of different programs and grants and um, I think I know they're moving more towards loans um, coming out now with the different types of um, support groups that are coming. Um, some of the best places to look for, um, let me think about that for a minute. I wasn't expecting to have to answer. Okay, that's all right. Um, so Shannon, can I ask, or Shannon, is she here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, hi Shannon. Um, how do you, what platforms do you use right now? And how did you get your uh, foot traffic? Um, the biggest thing right now that I'm seeing for a lot of my small business clients is, um, really, really giving them a strong presence on Google um, many of them think that Facebook and Instagram is the way to go and the only way to go. And if they're on there, they're fine. Um, but when I tap into what they've got going on, the biggest thing is really Google traffic, um, where Facebook and Instagram kind of helps people see what you've going on, what you've got going on in your business. Um, right. from time to time, the Google platform is huge and then utilizing kind of like, um, reputation management with them depending on the different client and you know people are people are people so um just kind of replying in a way that brings more positivity to the business rather than negativity but um google's a big big deal right now and just it always has been really but people just aren't sure but my issue is just trying to tap into other ways um through the chamber or um, other local maybe nonprofits that can we can cross promote with and I think that's a big deal but um, I wonder if there's any legal parts with that maybe we can talk about that I have about 12 clients in the area here that um, I may need these services so I can kind of ask if I'm doing things well for them and if I'm crossing any lines um, or maybe there's something there um, legally that we can do more of for them um, so that's kind of why I wanted to plug in today and see but yeah, if there's you guys a, are on small businesses and you're not a Google strong person or strong on Google, please claim your business on Google and post on it like you do on Facebook and Instagram. It's huge. So if you're not doing it, do it. <laughs> it's a great, that's a great tip, Shannon. And yes, it's, it's actually um, one of the calls that, that the law firms, you know, they'll, they'll send out what areas that people are calling in on. So we, we know kind of, okay, what's the pulse? And of course, you saw a lot of them in the beginning where people are going, oh my gosh, am I compliant on this? Am I compliant on that? As the laws are so fluid and they're changing. And by the way, um, we have a COVID resource um, uh, for you that I, any of you that email me, I can send that out as well. That answers a lot of the day-to-day -day. and it's, it's, it's a fluid uh, uh, site because uh, the law firms are changing it weekly as the laws change. And as you know, the laws are different in each state and the laws are different and sometimes in counties, depending on, on where you're at. Um, but staying on top of that, that is a question that comes in a lot. What are there programs out there that I can apply for? Again, if you're a for-profit business, those are some of the questions an attorney can ask you. If you're a nonprofit, again, we have um, you know, attorneys in our, our local marketplace. Maybe we can ask that question or whatever that might be um, to kind of you know, get some answers on that. Make sure we're you know, turn over every stone. So good question. Um, anybody else? Oh, okay. Mona says that for state programs, the MEDC has business to business programs and services, local assistant with county and city econ development. Uh, yeah, because I know there's a big push right now with that. So if anybody needs some help with c connecting into that, because I know the county has a lot of support going on for the small businesses in um, the Main Street, and it's the Main Street campaign. I 
blanking on the name of it now for sure, but I can get that to someone if they're interested in it um, because there's a lot of support that they're doing that ways. And I know a lot of the cities also are um, joining with the county forces as well with the chambers, with the social media, different ones like uh, I love Huron Valley, love the lakes, Novi Chamber. They all, they all have like hashtags and everything, but I know the county has some programs um, through the economic developer and the business one-stop center is also a very good resource for small businesses and they've um, joined forces with or they partner with often with the small business association as well um, and I know there's a bunch of other type of programs so if there's something more specific I'm now starting to think of a whole bunch of stuff but I don't want to get too far off topic from Lisa so um, I can try to answer any other questions or if anyone wants to get in touch with me outside of this I can try to connect them with who they need to connect with. That's awesome, Mona. I think it's of interest to everybody, really. So thank you for sharing. Was there anything else, Jen? I don't see anything in the chat. Anybody want to open up their, um, their mute and, or their microphone and ask another question of Lisa? Or the chamber or anybody else? I just want to ask real quick, when you were going through your slides, you had uh, mentioned some of the business plans and then there was like supplemental where you could add on your family. Yes. Is it possible to just do a program with just your family? Are those available? Yes. As okay. a matter of fact, on the, on the um, legalshield.com slash info slash Huron Valley, you will see um, the family plan. And, and that's the one where you can get a, um, a, dis, a, a pretty significant discount now um, for the legal plan for your family. And again, you know, I've had these services myself uh, long before I got in the business. And really, it was somebody from my church that said something to me. And I wasn't interested in business. I was in a different career. But I didn't know um, what it was. And when I finally listened, he says, is your will current? Is your medical directive current? And it wasn't. Seven, seven out of 10 Americans don't even have a will in place, right? However, the Google st statistic for last year was an increase in 600% for medical directives. Why is that? We were separated from our loved ones who were in the hospital, right? I've lost an uncle who passed and it was the same scenario. My cousin's going crazy. Where's where is dad's medical directive? He didn't want to resuscitate. Well, you got to find the document or they're going to come to your house and do that, right? So whether it's things like that or you get traffic tickets, there's not a person listening to me that hasn't had a consumer challenge of some sort trying to take back a defective product, you know, someone's not honoring a warranty. Heck, we bought a $3,500 mattress. I mean, what the heck? They got it laid with gold or what, you know? And four months, we couldn't sleep in it. And of course, you call the, you know, the manufacturer or the store and they're like, I'm sorry, there's, that's got to be three inches deep for the divots. And they send somebody out to measure them. Oh no, they're only two inches deep. Well, it doesn't help our aching back in four months with a lifetime warranty, right? So some ridiculous thing like that. And I just picked up the phone Call the law firm, said, can you help me? And they said, well, you know, no guarantees, but we're going to send them a letter. They called, they picked up the mattress, gave us a new mattress and gave us a $300 store credit. I mean, that's just things that we deal with that we wouldn't think about. No one's sitting here going, oh, geez, I think I have to hire a $300 an hour attorney because uh, of this $50 matter. Well, when you have something like this, that's less than a latte a week, you can literally say, hey, wait a minute. I did just get something in the mail and I don't understand it. It's a class action lawsuit. What does it mean? Or I, I am going to have them write a letter so I can get my mattress back. Or, you know, I am going to update my will. I do have an, um, you know, an attorney to be able to go to traffic court for me. We've had six tickets, no judgment here, friends, no judgment. The Schiller household had six tickets since we've had our plan. <laughs> Ranging from one to three point tickets, right? I do a lot of traveling. I'm sure if you took your entire household over the past 17 years, you got some points on your record. We have none. Why do we have no points on our record? Every single time an attorney went to court on our behalf, we never had to be there and they got all points removed, right? What do you think that saved my car insurance? Rich, you're on the line to do some math there. What is what does a three point ticket cost me for the next four years, right? So just things like that. So yes, the family plan is available, and there's supplements that you can add to it if you have a home based business and things like that. And then there's the you know the other things as well. So for sure. So are we ready to show you this great prize? Any more questions? Okay. Ready. I love doing fun stuff. So first, I do too. <laughs> first of all, let me show you this 
handsome legal shield bag. I know you got to do the oohs and ahs. You can. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a huge tote. And in here, I've got some super cool things from me to your household. Um, coasters that have the legal shield and ID shield logos on them. For those of you that have children, if you've never ID'd your children with thumbprints so that you can help the police, God forbid, they ever show up missing, complimentary child ID kit. You can keep it at home. It's all personal. You got, you know, pictures, thumbprints. If anything ever helped, and God forbid, you've got something to be able to hand the authorities. Of course, keeping up with our pandemic, who doesn't want a legal shield mask and hand sanitizer? I mean, come on, radio frequency identification things to protect your credit cards from identity theft. Very cool things. Okay, you're all going to love this one. Ooh, a jacket Ooh, ah. with a micro fleece jacket. You can just tell me your size. Who doesn't want a legal shield and ID shield mug with truffles in their on their desk? A couple of those, and then of course. Oh look, Lisa, look. Oh wait, you got your. <laughs> That's great. And then who doesn't want to go to dinner? Fifty dollars at Baker's. We right want to go. Right there, and my friends at Clothing Cove, got to support them. I love them. The Clothing Cove, another $50. Woo! Okay, so and should we drumble. do it? So look, everybody, I have your names here. <laughs> All right? Y'all trust me? Oops. Y'all trust me? Good. Oops, I'm dropping them, but I'm not going to. Okay, ready? I'm ready. Ah, uh, can you see? No. Oh, Pam. Pam. Look at that. So, Pam, you can either take this or you can raffle it off for your fundraiser. <laughs> I'm, I'm that. What's our next fundraiser going to be? <laughs> <laughs> we have to create one, right? How hey, nice. <laughs> yeah. Listen, everyone, thank you so much. Congratulations, Pam. But thank you, everyone, for your time today. Hopefully, this at least got some things in your head about you know what we're all facing as business owners. Um, some resources are available to you. I've, again, I've got some free COVID resources. Please check the chamber site out. We've got some great prices for your even your families. Um, and then of course, uh, your businesses as well. You Feel free to reach out to me. We can set a, a, a virtual Zoom up or if you're all for meeting for coffee or lunch, I'm all about getting out in the community. So um, just let me know, give me a holler. Thanks so much for your time today. Jen, thanks for having me. Uh, Lisa, thank you so much. I think it was um, uh, eye-opening to see what um, what you offer and what it could offer a small business at a fraction of, of what what you might have to pay out, right? And um, remember, it's a benefit to you as a chamber member. You can go on our website or go on to Lisa's website and find out about it. And I, I think it, it's worth a cup of coffee just to talk to to talk to Lisa about that. Um, thanks so much for participating, everybody. Congratulations, Pam. Thank and uh, <laughs> thanks. All right. See you. Have a great day, everyone. Great week. <laughs>